and uh, we do have a quorum. Uh, Mrs. Cohn is not here, but the four other members are here. Uh, we have no cases, so I'm not going to take in. We don't have any sworn statements that we have to take he here. Can lie, he can lie. <laughs> <laughs> we just said that on the TV. But don't believe everything you hear on TV. <laughs> okay, we have no cases. We have a communication, and uh, I, why do you have a star next, an asterisk next mm -hmm. to your name, Lance? It may not be it says uh, you're, we're going to have an update on University How of many States. stars? One. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the one thing, uh, communication. And we also have a communication which we'll go into when we go into our work session from Joe Shields about lights on those mm. signs that we talked about. Do you wish to start now, please? Okay. Well, thank you for allowing me to uh, make a presentation. Um, what I want to do today is just bring you up to date on what we're getting ready to come to you with so that uh, any questions you have I can work on between now and uh, uh, 17th of May when it uh, when I'll come back with the final presentation I have handouts of um, all the maps and stuff so if it doesn't come up clearly at, after the presentation you know I can bring this stuff up if you want to see okay. something closer uh, the purpose is, uh, as I said, to come before you so we can make this thing easier when we come back to you for the final. Um, the land development at the present time, our engineers are completing the necessary design work for submission to Ray and Burgess and Eichels for the earthwork on Grand Vista Village. The high points, the villas at High Point Village Phase 2 and the first two cul-de-sacs of what we'll call on University Estates Phase Two residential. Grand Vista Village is going to be the first project I bring to you to get the final approval. Um, it's also our intent to do a little cleanup work on lots one and two, which are the front two lots on our project that we got uh, stalled at uh, when winter came, and we want to kind of dress those up. Uh, Part of that was an AEP out of a sus suspended telephone pole that we couldn't move at the time we were working. So we want to clean that up. Uh, this is just our site plan. I put this in here if we need to refer to it for any reason. The three uh, areas that we're going to talk about today are the, uh, this is Grand Vista Village. This is High Point Village, which phase two starts right there and goes out that cul-de-sac and then these are the next uh, residential areas uh, this will be part of phase two so uh, Grand Vista Village is going to be a 72 unit gated luxury three-story townhouse community which is on lot two uh, we'll probably build it and we'll start in with ten four unit buildings in the clubhouse and then progress as uh, as sales go. I think it'd be prudent since it's all the same uh, area that we get the approval for the whole thing when we come through. Uh, these are going to be exceptionally quality units, and uh, with an optional individual elevator in each each unit. <clears throat> they will have rear entry garages on the basement level. And then around front on the main street entrance, uh, that's where your front door to your main floor will be. We plan to gate this at both the southern entrance and the uh, northern entrance. Uh, and like I say, I have it a gated community. Uh, we're planning on a very nice, deluxe, and well appointed clubhouse with a pool and deck and cart courtyards. One thing about Lot 2 is that uh, as you stretch from the southern end, which is back to uh, Lot 1, which is where the, uh, Dr. Connor's house is, that's a gradual slope all the way back to his house from the start of this. So it's our plan to come in and just kind of, not I don't want to say stair steps right, but just kind of go with the terrain. You know, so there'll be actually three heights of the project, but there won't be a, the uh, mass grading or anything, I think Pat was around what, 14 to 15, yeah. 15, 5, is the most we cut off at any one spot. 
And actually, uh, when you look at it, there's a, just a hill, a point that comes up right in the middle of lot two. So that's where most of that dirt has to come off of. The rest of it is pretty close to grade. Uh, this area was stripped of most of the vegetation by the previous owners, so we and plan on doing extensive landscaping along with uh, some beautiful non-intrusive lighting to complement this development. This is probably the one development you're going to be able to see the best from Athens. So we want to make sure that we, uh, we do this part of it very nice. Uh, John Valentor is our architect who designed Grand Vista Village and John Pacine of uh, Pacine uh, Engineering in Columbus is our uh, engineer. And we anticipate that Ron White of University of States Construction Services and our local subcontractors will build these units. We have probably on and off about 115 to 120 different contractors. And to my knowledge, every one of them is local. Uh, so we're proud of that fact. Needless to say, there's a, sp a spectacular view of Athens and OU. And we project a mid-May sub submittal on this for the final. As far as variances go, if needed, uh, we'll, we'll probably be identifying as we plan and, and have some more conversations with Steve and Ray in the next uh, three weeks as we're putting this plan together. We feel this gated community will be a beautiful addition to Athens as well as other features in the project of, a, of, a, of this size and scope. It is anticipated the internal roads of this project will be privately built, owned, and maintained, but will be built to the same standards that Altamont Drive was built. That's where High Point Village is. If you look at Grand Vista, when you're coming in from 682 right here at the entrance, you'll come up, there'll be a gated entry right here and a gated entry down here. That general slope that I was telling you about just kind of follows this up to here. And this is where Dr. Connard's house is now. This is where my sales office is down here on lot one. <coughs> um, the thing about right in here, just looking at the topo, is, is where that little mound comes up that I was telling you about. That's where most of the earthwork will do. The rest of this will be just uh, cutting down to uh, you know the surface and spreading out. Um, when you come in, there'll be a turnaround here. Here's your clubhouse area. Uh, what's the easiest way to show you? If you come in and you own one of these, you would drive in this way and come in and go in your garage. And then, like I said, there's an elevator that would take you up to the three stories. Uh, if someone comes to visit you or you want to use your front door, there'll be a sidewalk there and you come right into your main level of your apartment or condo. Um, this is a side facing the city. So from you know 682 when it goes on route there, this is what you're looking at. We've got a fairly good landscaping plan put together, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, we're a little leery on you know exactly what we want to do here until we get a little farther on, because we want to make sure that you know that uh, that side really looks good. Lance, could I ask a quick question? Sure. Um, if you you showed the entrance to the units for visitors, but how wide are the streets going to be? Is there going to be visitor on street parking or what will? Uh, we're going to have a little pull off areas. <coughs> See the parking here and here. Mm -hmm. And I thought there was, there's one schedule for down right in here. I don't, I can't tell if that's what it is drawn there or not. But the, the streets will be uh, same width as Altamont Drive, which are 24. 24, 24 feet, which is city code, curbs and everything. <coughs> we took that into consideration, Peg, uh, simply because uh, if you're coming to visit someone here, you're probably not going to feel comfortable going around and, and parking in the back. So, right. So we've taken into consideration that so that... Uh, 
the two phases I mentioned, 10 units and, and the clubhouse, we'll probably split it down the line and do this part, and then as sales go, we'll keep on going this way. I know these are hard to see because I had to copy them off these blue uh, things, but uh, it, there's a unit right there. On the outside, you'll have your living room and your master bedroom on your main, uh, what I will call the first floor. The center ones will have your living room and a small guest bedroom, and their master bedroom is up, up on the th uh, second floor. Same way here is, you know, uh, living room, master bedroom, and then the, the three elevators come up, and also there's steps, you know, <clears throat> for, for each one. Um, these will all be brick face townhouses, uh, very, very uh, appealing. Uh, the second floor shows you on the uh, one has the master bedroom downstairs, your two uh, additional guest bedrooms are up here. <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, your bathroom and your elevator and all that. These are little porches. Uh, actually, there should be a line through here because these two share this porch and a porch here. Uh, kind of a walkout type thing. Um, this one's really hard to see, but this is the entrance of the garages right here. Uh, this is all your heating and uh, uh, washer and dryer and stuff like that with an elevator and then this is just a bonus room if somebody wants to finish it into a family room they can or they might want to keep it for storage <clears throat> anybody got any questions so far on the, the layout or anything is the garage are they above ground or down in? actually they're below ground the ones that yeah so if, if you if I come you come to visit you're coming up here in your park and you're going in the first floor if you're if you're coming home as the owner you drive around back and come into the to the garage like that and uh, this picture uh, I'll show you maybe I should just take this over here now see the front of it here, that's where you'd enter the doors. If you drive around back, you'd be coming in at this level. Are most of those single car? Double car, all in the two car. This is uh, the landscaping part of it, and I apologize. Uh, this thing actually needs to be looked at in the mirror because uh, I couldn't get it to switch around. But when you come in, Grand Vista Village is actually right here. So this thing needs to flip over. But it gives you an idea on the UE side, you know, we're going to have plenty of trees along with our other normal landscaping on the uh, University of States Boulevard. This area here, we've got a lot of shrubs and uh, trees planted in between the buildings and stuff. But we'll end up with a uh, bank here, and we're, we're still in the planning stages on this. What we're going to do on this side is there'll be a retaining wall come all the way down through here, and then we'll have a waterfall uh, out of rocks and everything coming down the entryway. So that's how we'll separate that side. I'm sure we'll have to have some type of retaining wall or, or pretty good slopes on coming out the back of that just for safety's sake and nothing else. So hopefully by the time I come to the Shade Tree Commission we'll have had some uh, people help us with, with getting uh, a better, because uh, like I said that's a side of face as a city. In terms of street lights and everything, uh, one of our ideas right now is on University of Straits Boulevard, everybody has a mailbox with a light that has to stay burning. We are convinced maybe that if we do something similar in height all the way through there, that that might light that area up, you know, very good for pedestrian walking and enjoying the evening and everything. 
versus putting full size street lights up there. Because that was our one concern is you know, we don't want that to show from from uh, from Athens. So that's what we've got our engineers working on now. And these could be displaced, you know, just uh, kind of like the bike path down here, the, the bollards that they have, except maybe have them a little, little taller, above height, you know, head height. <coughs> uh, the villas at High Point Village <coughs> Phase Two. That's the the, uh, the retirement condo condos. We anticipate uh, those are going to be a basic extension of of the Phase One design and appearance. We're doing some studies now to, to uh, see about a bonus room above the garages. There's been, uh, we toured uh, Mid-Ohio Development, which we <coughs> bought these plans from, and they've uh, had good success with where they have their garages, uh, having the steps immediately as you walk in and go up, and then above the garage, have a nice big bonus room. And uh, we've kind of found that people buying these type condos will take that downstairs bedroom, make that their office and computer room. But they, when their kids come to visit and everything, it's nice to have that upper area there where they can put the beds and, and stuff like that. It's probably not something that they're going to use every day because of the steps. Um, engineering uh, is underway for the land development plan will be submitted so that earthwork can begin. Uh, final submittals are on track and we will most likely follow the Grand Vista uh, submittal as the first one. The clubhouse uh, in phase one is complete. We're expanding the landscaping and paving the parking lot. Uh, we're getting quotes on the pool because we want to try to get that in pretty good, pretty quick. Uh, just to update you on that, uh, phase one stops right here. Uh, this is phase two right here, and that'll be one of the next things we're coming <coughs> to you after Grand Vista. Uh, the residential part, these are going to be mid-range, uh, single-family uh, area just west of the water tower. It'll feature two cul-de-sacs consisting of 70 by 150 foot lots. Uh, a lot of our studies have shown that we need another price range in that 175 to 225 range are in great demand in the Athens area. Uh, we'll continue the same streets uh, utility lighting plan that we have in uh, phase one. Uh, obviously the uh, engineering for land development and stuff will have to be done presented to Ray and Burgess and Naples. Uh, with construction scheduled for mid to late summer, uh, as soon as we can get through the process. I put in here the detailed sanitary and water and storm plan will present it to the EPA, which we have to do, and uh, in addition to any other subdivision information that we are required by the city code. A lot of this is uh, fairly easy because of the initial sanitary and uh, water plan is already mapped out. So this is just taking that and hooking on to the main system. So uh, one of the things about uh, phase two here is we're going to have an intersection at the University of States Boulevard and Broadmoor Court will feature a very attractive roundabout circle with decorative centerpiece. This very strategic intersection differentiates the End of phase one, the initiation of phase two of University of States will also lead off toward the convention and lodging center. And this is the, uh, these are the two cul-de-sacs, and you certainly can't see the roundabout, but what that is, is, is what I was talking about there. When you come up through, you, you just make, the go on, make a, a dip and go on, or you can go around it and go out through, uh, to that area or come up to the clubhouse area. <clears throat> One of the things that we'll need to talk with Ray and his staff about is, to my knowledge, I'm not sure you have a roundabout in the, in Athens, so we want to make sure we get with Ray and Andy to, and Bob Troxell and all that, so that when we just 
you know, we got the fire trucks and everything else have to be able to negotiate that. So. Yeah. yeah, Andy's been doing a lot of uh, investigation into roundabouts in the last all three, four months, so Good. it's kind of timely. <laughs> I should probably have my engineer just call him right yeah. now before we get yeah. too much further along on that. Uh, one of the last things, and it's down the wet road uh, probably after the things I've been talking about, is on the front where the sales offices are, we're uh, doing our preliminary planning for a strip shopping center in the front of University of States on <coughs> Lot 1 where my sales office is now has begun. I'm showing you you today as a preliminary design by John Valentor, our architect. And again, I have to refer to our plans later if you want to see it. But actually, here's Armitage Road. Here's 682. This is what the front of the building will look like. And then on the same level, we'll have a, a little small banking center right there. The parking will be in the middle, and then the building will sit uh, right like this. When we talk about a uh, shopping center, uh, it's a pretty broad word, so I don't want to confuse anybody. We're not thinking of convenience stores or stuff like that. Our, one of our first visions was that there was a lot of specialty shops in Athens, you know, that could come in there in addition to maybe a tax professional or something like that. Uh, we're even looking at maybe putting one or two bedroom apartment above it just so like uh, an artist wouldn't open a shop there where then he got, could have his residence above it and be in a price range that he could afford to operate that, that business there. So that's kind of just in a nutshell. This level <coughs> of this project is the same level as where my trailer is now. We won't be going down any farther. We do have to go, go back a little bit because we haven't finished stair-stepping that hillside back there. Uh, we've got to <coughs> secure that for the safety of no, no other reason. Here's some of the kind of questions I had. Um, the gated community with the private roads and everything, I, I think, uh, again, is something that we want to quickly talk with Ray and, and Andy and everything about to make sure that as we design that, uh, we take into consideration the safety of the police and the fire department and uh, and all that. The roundabout I just mentioned. Uh, as we continue at UE Boulevard, uh, we want probably going to apply for approval to keep the bike path instead of the sidewalks. Uh, the thing that the bike path right now is on the right. And the reason we put it on the right only is because we knew we had a lot of construction going on. We wanted to keep everything <coughs> controlled on the right side. When we put our final coat of pavement down, we will split that bike path in half and have half of it on each side identified uh, with a yellow line and the little reflectors that you put in the, uh, con or in the blacktop. And that gives access to both sides so people don't have to cross the streets, kids especially is what we're thinking. So that's an explanation of that. Uh, the landscaping plan, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, are you the one I called to get on that uh, agenda? Yes. I didn't do the, the last one we went to, so. I will take care of that with Steve and we'll be doing that May 3rd. When I was reading through the regulations, one of the questions I had is, is how much of the total UE project information do I need to submit for this final PUD for the Grand Vistas? <coughs> I mean, since we've already covered the overall site plan, we know where the water's coming from, and is, is all that stuff need to be, you don't need to do all that again, just the stuff as it relates to. Yeah, it looks to me like you've got three different submissions here. Right, yeah. Grand Vista PUD, the PUD at uh, phase two. Phase two, and then you've got a subdivision for the uh, new residential. New residential. And each one would just really be contained to that lot. Right. Or lots okay. in the case of the and subdivision. 
and the water plans and stuff is just basically for that on site. From that, understand right. it ties right into the regular. Right, because those are already been approved on you know diversity estates and everything else, so we don't need to re review need to those all at all. Okay. One thing, Mayor, and then uh, probably you and I will have to meet again on this. The settlement agrees agreement calls for us to have a submittal by May 15th. Mm -hmm. I think in in uh, all fairness, we looked at a calendar during this negotiation sure. and thought Thursday the 17th was your meeting. So, <laughs> you know, I don't want to be <laughs> in violation of the agreement already, but that's something we need to clear up. Right. That's probably the best way to do that, just to get in the habit of it, is just write a letter saying, ask you to, to move that date that established in the settlement agreement to such and such that I could confirm it and write it back to you to that that date. Then everybody's got mm -hmm. a copy of the original settlement and what has transpired. Because okay. I think we'll be adding to that file as these different PUDs get approved. Right. You know, okay. You have to document it. My main concern was the settlement agreement, though. Oh, I know. Yeah, okay. I, I don't think I'll wait uh, in two days. What our, what our engineers are doing now is uh, we're finishing up some work for Ray on phase one of the villas. Uh, we're in the middle of uh, the Grand Vista. So as I get that stuff, I will bring it to him. One problem that, that I'm going to ask for uh, your help and cooperation in is there's one part of the soil stability study that uh, Bert, or, uh, PSI is doing that I'm not sure they can get to you by the 15th. <coughs> I can have the whole erosion control and the land development, the hillside and everything, but the soil slope stability study is really going to be pushing to get it by the 15th. So I'm going to present the whole program to you minus that and with the uh, hope that we could go ahead and approve it pending you know, the soil sample report. Um, and Pat, we don't really, would, be, would it be safe to say we're probably two weeks behind that May 15th date? Probably. Two to three, two to three weeks. Uh, part of that is we've had rain and these drilling <laughs> rig companies are scheduled and they don't care who you are. I mean, you can yeah. talk all you want. They're not going to move you up in their schedule. But anyways, I wanted to let you know that and see if that might be something that would be agreeable to you. Put that in the same. Put that in the same memo. In the same memo. Yeah. And that should be to the to the mayor or the planning commission. Probably to copy both. 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 Be the easiest. Just yeah. do both now because the settlement the planning commission is not involved with the settlement seven. agreement. Okay. The city is, is and that I've been authorized by council to administer that. Okay. And the uh, last thing I had on here was. Uh, you know, in the next two or three weeks, I would be tickled to death to uh, give anyone a tour that uh, would like to come out and uh, see what we've done, and I, we can walk or drive through the uh, the areas that we're talking about here, so you have a better understanding of uh, what we're uh, doing. I just put this together as uh, the kind of the final submittal. We've already done the preliminary package, which is 2109. Point one, two, all those things, which item D, by the way, is the land development section of that, uh, which answers a lot of uh, uh, the overall questions. And then if I understand the, <clears throat> the book right, these are the, the four, three things we need to do is 2109.18, which is basically your PUD application. 2110 uh, is the hillside, and 27 is your land development. Um, the other section was the flood regulations, which do not apply obviously on the hillside. Um, the other thing is the zoning. We've already done the zoning. So, and uh, last thing I want a couple of things I want to say is communication has been excellent between Ray and his staff. And Ray, I appreciate uh, all your people. In the last month, we've you know I thought, I thought we've made real good progress and. Uh, you and I both talked at maybe bi-weekly meetings, uh, at least with you, before you go to staff meeting, might be uh, beneficial and, and, 
and any time if they, you want me to come to staff meeting, uh, I'm more than welcome to bring Pat or, you know, so we can uh, just try to keep the communication lines open. Uh, Pat and Ron White and myself are open all the time, and, and now I'm done talking, so what questions <laughs> do you have? I have one. I, I would like to come and visit, but next week I'm going to Florida, so I can't. Oh. 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 Well, you went to Hawaii. <laughs> well, you can come the week after. <laughs> but I have a question. I was going along what my son used to call the windy highway over there across the river along the ridges there, and that highway. What can I see? When I, I was going towards White's Mill. What, on top of that, what, what do I see up there? You see the, the building you see kind of sitting all by itself yeah. mm -hmm. is the clubhouse for the uh, um, villas. Let me, <coughs> let me get back to that. Mm -hmm. Well, I could see it by it's pretty windy. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the one on the top, and then you, to the right, I could see. What you're seeing is this building that right building here. That building there. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. if you to the right, when I before that to the right, I could see it looked like houses or something among the trees. You might be able to see the corner of this condominium in there. Yeah, and then. Well, the tree there. Right the now, the are trees are out. You yeah. can see the roofs of a couple of these. Yeah, I could see some. But that, I was seeing roofs. I saw the one all by itself, and then it looked back in the trees. Yeah, this one's things. kind of. There's no trees or landscaping yeah. around this clubhouse. And I think the only thing when I looked the other day was the corner of this building, and then there's three or four houses right here. Mm -hmm. Those are those are the houses. You so you yeah, see I, from the road. I could see them from the road. Of course, I was driving pretty fast and not. <laughs> you were? Yes. I only speed. Don't tell anybody to watch that. I usually speed. But, you know, you can't. There are cars behind me, and I couldn't poke along there. But uh, okay. that's all I wanted to know. That's all. But I will call and make arrangements to come right out. Right there is see. the clubhouse that you're going to Because right now, as I recall, yeah. the guy was up there yeah, maybe yeah. a week or so ago. Yeah. You've got two buildings completed. One looks like it's almost ready to be complete. Buildings, uh, building two is done. There's people living in it. Right. Buildings one and three are completed, other than trim and. A yeah, I thought three needed just a trim and bit. three. Looked I like think it was close. It, it? And you're working on another one, and then you got a foundation on another one. Building four, the foundation has uh, been poured and ready to go. Yeah, this is a nice view from the clubhouse. Yeah. It's not very nice from looking at the clubhouse out there by itself and sitting on well, top of an empty hill. Well, that's unfortunate. It's, it's going to be kind of by itself. I mean, well, it needs something it's got around its own it. Parking lot. Trees. Yeah. Trees. It needs trees. Okay, I don't have. Does anybody else have any questions? No. Okay. Just okay. one small thing. I noticed you have two different spellings for Burgess and Naples. Which one do you want to use? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I didn't claim to be a expert <laughs> type. Well, as an engineer, you know, I know that's horrible. So. <laughs> I guess, Harry, if that's the only thing that, that my problem is uh, that and Joanne speeding, I don't want to speed <laughs> out in my <laughs> subdivision. I think it's one piece. Is it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have, and this is not on those other two, but when you get to phase two, you're going to have a construction road so that you don't disturb mm -hmm. the first ten or so buildings. Is that yeah. Right? Uh, Which is was going to hook in around where that clubhouse is. Mm -hmm. I thought not that far from it. Uh, which you're talking about the for the uh, temporary the, the <laughs> villas. Well, I was also curious on the on the Grand Vista too as to okay. Because uh, you sell those luxuries there, and how much how much construction traffic do you want through it? When you just all the this? construction traffic is supposed to come up right up through here now. Right. Uh, the the first road that you talked about, Mayor, is that road right mm -hmm. through there? The Pat's. It's going to be a temporary. Temporary that he's getting ready to do right now. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Pat, I'm not sure how you in Grand Vista. We'll be, bring, we'll be bringing bring up uh, this way. construction traffic in on the first entrance right there to keep as much traffic off that boulevard as we can. Right, that's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. 
And when we can get back to here, Mayor, uh, uh, I forget if this is, is this the ridge path? To kind of lend itself that we've we've studied about uh, <coughs> bringing a whole road up through there at some point, or is it right here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That road comes down through there now. It's kind of an old logging road that goes right through there now. So once we get back into here, then we're going to switch everything back, to come in back okay. there. How many lots are you talking about, really, in that second residential subdivision? Uh, Roughly. I Not believe there was 46 lots. <clears throat> That's actually, this has actually pretty much been cleared and it's just a uh, flat ridge top right there. Uh, shouldn't take a lot of work to, to make that go in. Right. Now, I'm just curious as to you said the elevators were optional, right? Based on probably pre-sales, I guess. Mm -hmm. Are you going to put them in unless mm -hmm. somebody we, said if, so, if somebody's uh, pre-sold and said if we build them, them ourselves, we will put them in. Yeah. Because at the last quote we had, they were only like ten or eleven thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and we just think that if someone chooses not to do it, mm -hmm. it's going to be that much harder for them to resell to the next, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because. Mm -hmm. uh, and these are small, you know, right, residential right. elevators. Once um, the unit is sold and has an elevator in it and so on, something goes wrong with the elevator, who fixes it? Actually, they'll be responsible to, uh, I'm sure there'll be a warranty period and all that, but uh, it's like some of the other things we've put in on the, uh, the grinder pumps for the uh, septic tanks and stuff. We've got uh, an agreement with the people we buy them from that there's a service agreement that goes with it. and uh, So they'll be able to find somebody to service right. it if it's not, yeah. We will make that part of our agreement when we buy them. Now, is Grand Vista going to be uh, condominium? Condominiums, yeah. Okay. Four units. Anybody else have anything? Thank you very much. All right. <coughs> and I can wait a week for you to come back. Okay. All We're right. all going to come come together. <laughs> we'll, we'll have a party, right? <laughs> yeah. In the clubhouse. In the clubhouse. We're going to the clubhouse for a party. You can have one of your uh, planning <laughs> sessions out at the, the clubhouse. Okay. Um, I had the mayor passed on on another communication from Joe Shields about Mike, so when we get to um, um, work session, we can talk about it. I keep hearing a, a, an echo, and I thought at first I was losing it, but I know that <laughs> I'm not. Why are we hearing an echo? From the TV. But we, they didn't do it last time. Does it always echo? No. Well, they need to get a new TV that doesn't echo in here. Will that do it? Yeah. He's fixing it now. Thank you. Okay. All right. Do we have a uh, citizen who wishes to speak? <laughs> Steve, but Steve has always wants to speak. Steve has a few things. Steve has some things. Okay. Well, you can be either communications or announcements and other business. Do you want to be announcements and other business? You, you can be announcements and other business. You can start. You can start. I don't care. Building height in the B2D zone, which council requested in association with your recommendation to rezone the north block of Court Street or the third block of Court. So let's just copy the ordinance. What I did <clears throat> on the next sheet is I copied the existing ball control chart. So you can, I circled the part that gets changed. Um, 
and would want you to notice to just notice too that the only difference between now between the B2D and the B3 is um, an additional five feet in height is allowed and an additional one half story in height. So that's the only difference now in height restrictions comparing uh, B2D to the B3 district. So that has now been changed. Again, um, even though this doesn't say final reading on these, this is a exactly what the council had asked. This is something I didn't know anyone was working on, but evidently they were, and that is changes to um, preliminary application for a subdivision. That's section 210309D, and then definition. What it did was it added, looks to me like what it did was it added condominium um, clarification to the subdivision section and then actually changed the definition. What I did with this too was I attached for you um, the existing code. Like the second page shows where that number nine will be inserted. And the third page is just the existing definition of a condominium that will this will substitute for that. So those are the two latest things, um, ordinance-wise, from City Council. Well, I just wanted to give you the that's where you got your stuff up to date is because you yeah, know. you have is a proposed subdivision of land that's just within the three-mile jurisdiction of the city. It's in Canaan Township, Section 18. Um, I brought this up to the Regional Planning Commission last Thursday. But what's occurring now is um, people want to subdivide land, but they don't necessarily want to go through the entire uh, soil science submittals and sewage disposal design that's now required by the new health regulations. In this particular case, um, if you look at the large map there or turn to the second page, there's about a 90-acre parcel that's being proposed to be split <clears throat> into one that's about 15 that the owner will retain, and then two pieces that are around 35 acres each. The next page. <coughs> is actually a copy of a soil type overlay map that Chuck Hammer did at the uh, County Health Department. Um, and if you look down on the bottom in his notes, he says there's insufficient information presented at, the time for, at this time for health department review or approval. Uh, no public sewer sy sewage system is available. In speaking with Bob Eichenberg, the county planner, um, he tells me that state law allows for the subdivision of land greater than five acres in area to be directly submitted to the uh, county recorder <coughs> and that it can be recorded without any other approvals. Um, administering the subdivision regs for the planning commission in the city, I don't, I haven't allowed that and I think <coughs> I've mentioned that to you before. I always want to see some notation from the health department. Um, in this case, even if it's no system has been approved, uh, recommended, proposed. Um, basically, it's someone from Columbus that wants a mm. 
wants to own 35 acres in southeast Ohio, come down and camp, bird watch, enjoy the woods. At this time, though, they have no intent to build a house at this time or to require any <clears throat> sewage disposal system. Um, A lot of this, I believe, is driven by the new requirements of the health department because they actually want you to submit information to them. They don't, they're not designing systems for you now. You propose something, and it includes a, a soil study. I guess the question that I have is <clears throat> should these approvals be held up right now un until a system is designed and proposed, even if it's not intended to be installed? Or can these simply be approved as non-buildable sites or sites for which construction cannot occur until a sewage disposal permit is obtained from the uh, city county or from the county health department? Would that notation be recorded when the mm -hmm. subdivision was filed? Um, a lot of times there are additional notations that are put on the approval sheets that go over to the recorder's office and the auditor. And I think that's a good idea that <laughs> if, it, if these were approved without sewage disposal approval, that it be required that a notation be made on the deed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the next person who comes along doesn't think when a title search occurs or a transfer occurs, they don't think that they can, the next guy can run out and build his house. Right. Um, I mean, you can see an example of that right now out on Columbus Road. Someone. I mean, that was almost right in town, but not in the corporation limit. Someone built a very, looks like a very nice, large home uh, without checking first to see how they would obtain water and sewer. And how are they obtaining it? I'm not sure. That's running through okay. council right now as an annexation proposal. Well, even if it's annexed, how are they going to obtain it? Is there um, a water line or is they'll have to come down to meet our the city utilities. Yeah. Utilities won't be extended to them. They'll have to come to the existing utility. Yeah, they'll have to basically run a six inch water line and put a fire hydrant out there. Mm. Wow. <laughs> but I don't know what the pressure is yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now are they asking for the for this site to be split into these two sites plus their residual? That's correct. And their residual site is all right. Yes. Yeah, it has, a, it has a home on it functioning um, sewage disposal system. They essentially just want to take 60 acres that is separated by Dutch Creek Road, I believe. Yeah, Dutch mm -hmm. Creek Road. Um, sell it off into essentially two 35-acre parcels that at this time are not intended to be developed. That's really unusual that there'd be somebody that would want two. There would be two somebodies who would want 35 mm -hmm. acres to come and bird watch on. Or whatever it is they intend yeah, to do. Right. They don't intend to build. Uh -huh. um, so with your permission, I'd, I'll recommend and then get signatures afterwards that there be um, a notation in the deed that these are not um, considered building sites, unless you want to handle it a different way. Well, I think you can say building sites, but I think we have to even be more specific and it has no sewage disposal because somebody could even... You're saying you want to camp. Well, if you do, I mean, it's camping without any sewage disposal stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or if you even want to go a little pavilion <laughs> or picnic shelter area so that you can cook out or other things. There's still there's no water, there's no sewer, there's no public utilities okay. anywhere on that property that I know of. Now, maybe well, they can no, get water. I don't it's know. not only mm. that there are no public utilities, but there may not be any site that's even suitable for a septic tank. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, those I contours look pretty steep. No. Yeah, it has to be in. I, it has to be in the deed in such a way that it's going to immediately jump out when somebody is trying to purchase it. That's. Mm -hmm. this is I'd feel thing. sorry for somebody who purchased mm -hmm. it and thought, "Aha, down the line, I can divide it into some house lots." Well, you might it say something like, "The health department is not determined if the site's suitable for." Uh, a septic system? I think what you're saying is rather than make the emphasis on construction, make the emphasis on sewage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. what, uh, or can you even put something in about building is contingent upon approval by the health department? Hmm. Because at some later date, the health department may 
give them approval for some it's, sort of. Because right now the health department is the only real thing yeah. that is there to issue something that allows you to build a house. Right. If you build a house and you don't have a sewage system, you, you're out of luck. You have yeah. a problem. <coughs> Outside of town, there are no other There's no restrictions other. or regulations. Right. Mm -hmm. At the Regional Planning Commission meeting, um, Chuck Hammer was there, <coughs> and he did comment that he believed that way up on top of the hill, um, <laughs> here, there could be a site that you could build on. And somewhere in the future, someone wa might want to build. There's some houses that are built actually in the city that I would never have imagined <laughs> anyone could get there. But they had the wherewithal to put their own long private driveway in <laughs> and get to the site. So that could occur sometime in the future. So, well, if you tie it to health department approval for, for building, mm -hmm. then that is probably the fairest way to do it. Okay. Yeah. And in any case, even if somebody owns 35 acres right now and they start to build without a sewage disposal permit, that's separate regulation that they would be violating. Mm -hmm. So, but at least this way, when the land transfers, someone will know that. If you own 35 acres now with no notation like that, you may not know the difference. Yeah, because if you look at the contours, any pollution or slippage or anything that occurs on that land is going to go right down into that <laughs> creek. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Okay. <laughs> That's the third item that I have. Okay. Let me just see a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I've been out to this. I've been to this property here. Right up. This is 50 in the oh, yes. Manzelli stuff. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. The Manzelli stuff. 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 Mm -hmm. um, what I provided you with was the uh, agenda and the minutes from the March first 2007 meeting of the Planning Commission where Mr. Mark Spezza made a presentation um, concerning this particular property. Um, in particular on page three of the minutes, Mr. Spezza was advised to submit all the required, required documents uh, that would concern a minor subdivision of land. And the very last page, um, section 210304E, are those items that need to be submitted. The only thing, and I just wanted to bring you up to date on this, what I'd received already. The only thing that I have that's required off that list right now is that survey. Mm -hmm. I informed Mr. Spezza when he dropped that off at the office that um, even though he's indicated um, an access easement, for people to go across the front um, and share a <coughs> private road. Um, he did not submit any maintenance information. How would the road be developed? Who would share in the maintenance? Who would decide when maintenance was required? Who would remove snow? Those kinds of things. So he needs to provide that in addition. I also told him that he did not have any um, notations, information, documentation on sewage disposal. And I told him to get with uh, Nick Carr, our director of water and sewer. I talked to Nick, and he said there's no sewer available right out at the street. You would, there's a manhole across the street that each of these could pump sewage to. Um, that would be one option. Um, he didn't want to get in a situation where you had a common private pump station. Um, so there, there are some other things that have to be considered before approval for sewage disposal would be to pump it across 
on the street, crossing they didn't State have Street. They go under the street to, mm -hmm. to get to it, right? Um, in a lot of cases, for example, the Highway Patrol coming back the other way did bore underneath uh, 5032 to get their sewage over to a lift station that's mm -hmm. out by the motel. Um, the manhole I believe that Nick was talking about will be the one that Beaumont Green will pump back to. Mm -hmm. um, an alternative <clears throat> is to get an easement across the property next door owned by Holzer Docks um, and then McBee's also to get back to the lift station that's back there. So that's a second alternative. So I guess what I'm saying is we have one part of, of several that are required. We have a survey, but we have no, uh, no approval for sewage disposal and <clears throat> still need some kind of maintenance agreement if this is the configuration proposed. And so. this easement across all the properties is, mm -hmm. is going to, in effect, be an access road, right? Right. Well, we haven't seen I mean, the have description. It is no, but it would have to be. It would have to be, yeah. Using the existing... Uh, using the existing access to mm -hmm. State Street? My understanding is that this will all come off the single existing um, access point. There will be no, in this configuration, there's no request for additional um, opening permits mm -hmm. to access the street. Three of the lots which front on the limited access highway could only be approved by ODOT anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's highly unlikely. <clears throat> so that's just kind of an update on that one. Mm -hmm. um, some information here that Melissa may just hand it to me. Same thing we run on the other side of the highway. This is over where Holzer Clinic proposes to construct. This is on the other side of the highway? I thought holes are Same height as, same side of the other side of the Other side of 5032. Further oh, further oh, further cross side oh, okay. Crosses over. Yeah. <clears throat> the rest of the limited access right now. <laughs> same situation, just kind of a mirror image. Mm -hmm. um, I just st started corresponding with Sierra Meek, who works at Mike Nolan's law firm up in Nelsonville, who's handling this particular <clears throat> part of the development process for them. Um, you can see a line there that's indicated as the city corporation line separating sections 28 and 22 of Canaan Township. If you can see that right there. It goes right through the middle of what's called Tract 1. Oh, okay. Yeah. <coughs> and basically that line is right in the middle of the proposed building. Um, discussions with Holzer <laughs> are that they need to, to request annexation. Um, the area that's showed as track two is actually adjacent to the three professional office buildings that are out there right now that are indicated as Hocking River properties. Uh, their intent here, as I understand it, <clears throat> is to create a lot known as track two that could be leased or sold off separately. So they want to create that. The other one indicated is track one will be the site that the hospital will actually, or the clinic will sit on. <clears throat> and track three is just the total residual that's left over. In this case, you can see too that they propose um, extension of an, a, a dedicated existing right of way to go on out past the hospital and serve to uh, provide access to track three. Again, you can see limited access right of way there. That's where. You can't just punch through the fence and mm -hmm. create your own access point to the highway. So they don't have, at this point, they don't have any access point already permitted, right? Um, you can barely see it all the way yeah. down on the left there. It's the existing cut through the fence that services the properties that are there now. When you go down oh, there and right turn in. Right at the beginning of the dedicated right. 90, right. 90 feet right. dedicated. Yeah, okay. Just before that the little, there's a little 14. tiny spot there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the two little curved lines. Right. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. That's where you turn through the fence right now to go to Auto Tech or the motel mm -hmm. or those three office buildings. Okay. Um, Melissa just handed me, and this happened real quick. 
um, request to subdivide this land in that manner. Just, just mm -hmm. came. Mm -hmm. so down the the and who is that? Who is that request mm -hmm. from? This is from Michael Nolan's office from oh, Sierra from Meek. Oh, okay. Um, and in this particular case, um, Nick Carr, Director of Water and Sewer, has been involved um, in this process. <clears throat> He said so long as their utility plans don't change, and I don't believe that they're going to, or they're not proposed to at this time, um, sewage disposal is available and accessible there. there. The system is there and they can tap into it. Um, <coughs> also, so that question, unlike the other project, that question has been answered. Um, she's also provided, it looks like in here, a draft. Sorry, I didn't want to make any copies, but there's just there's one here of some agreements that will be common to, to all three properties. And several pages down in there, it has a very extensive description of um, the easement, how it can be used and not used, who will maintain it, who will clear snow, who will keep debris off of it. Um, that kind of thing. So they have submitted information regarding uh, construction, responsibility, and maintenance. This is going to be a an outpatient clinic, isn't it? Or is it going to have inpatient mm -hmm. facilities? I think everything we've seen so far has been outpatient. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> who knows if they do a change of use at some point. There has been some discussion concerning track two that there might there may be a co-locator or other service provider for radiology and imaging type services that might want to go there. Um, <coughs> so they want to, my understanding from our most recent discussions with Holzer is they want to leave that as an option where someone could actually come I'm in, purchase their own piece of property and not have to lease. <coughs> What's going to happen to their building on Columbus Road. They just rent that. They just rent that? Yeah, yeah that building belongs to uh, Glenn Knudsen. Oh, okay. I guess they didn't know that. It was just originally a small like area of that building that was used for use of Holzer, and then through the years they they took the whole building yeah, over. Yeah, because Matthews they was in there for a while. Across the street. Yeah. <laughs> the way this is configured, Steve, the track three then lies between one and two and the river. Portion of track portion three. Of this. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. The large area south of proposed tracks one and two is basically the floodway, the relocated floodway. Um, <coughs> and this other area on out to the east will take a lot of work for any kind of development to occur there at all. It's outside the conditional letter of map revision fill area that was approved by FEMA. Most of that's very low, and treed, swampy, wet. There's a, there's a drainage ditch that drains the whole other side of the hillside across State Street that comes down through there. So basically, there's very little development that could occur on track three without a lot of additional mm -hmm. fill. Well, they'd also have to get some permission from the Corps of Engineers, wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. If they modify or go beyond that conditional letter of map provision that was approved by FEMA, um, yes, they'd have to submit new engineering studies, um, hydraulic hydrology studies, to indicate that there was equal conveyance through there and no adverse <coughs> impact um, beyond what is permitted uh, to adjacent properties. So this is a proposal for a minor subdivision. Um, And again, that's just a draft. I can correspond with her. D is there any concerns that anybody might see right now on this? And again, this information was just provided yeah. just mm -hmm. a few minutes ago. If you want to take time to look at the maintenance agreement. I look okay. through. I, they do seem to hit an awful lot. I didn't read every word of it. They seem to have everything in there. Doesn't it look like that too? <coughs> yeah, usually they're just one-page agreements, yeah, and, and that whole agreement right there is about <laughs> yeah. ten pages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like they covered just a little bit of everything. Insurance and um, help, help here from <laughs> lighting. <laughs> <coughs> 
Do you all have anything else? Yes, I do. Oh, sure. I see, I thought he said something else. <laughs> I'm busy for you guys. You've been busy today. <laughs> or more than today, obviously. <laughs> so many pieces of paper I don't want to do here. Yeah, this is I took your thing. notes from the last meeting on electronic change of traffic signs and turned them into this. And I think this is about as far as we've gotten. Maybe we can run through this and you can run. Well, this, this is Joe's. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Line. She requested I... Um, Send an email to Mr. Joe Shields over at the Ohio University. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if what you're looking at is what I looked at is his response, he doesn't really know. Mm -hmm. That's what doesn't it Doesn't have much input yeah, um, for these type signs as they might mm -hmm. relate to light pollution or light trespass. Because they're just a different kind of light. So that was accomplished and he did get he did respond back. Um, what I have here is what I think are the changes that we talked that you discussed at the last meeting. Uh, the first one is 230313, which is the sign ordinance section. Um, section B, number four. Um, what's in bold is just something that was that was added. Um, there was talk about the signs not moving, changing letters or images on a screen when the business was not open. Um, and in this particular section, it talks about that it's only principally permitted in B2 and B3 zones and conditionally permitted in M. So I believe that's what the discussion was about. Second page is a section of illumination of signs, uh, 230313G. And section two was changed. What has a line through it's what exists and what will be eliminated. What's in bold mm -hmm. caps is what will be added. And it says no illumination of signs in any zone during the hours where the business is not in operation, where it used to just say R3. And also the addition of the words, in addition, electronic message, message centers or other and or display screens shall not change their message or graphic display when the business is not in operation. So it clarifies both that in all zones, it doesn't matter what type of light right. you're yeah. using. Um, <clears throat> let's put it this way. The light's got to go out on a non-electronic sign. An electronic <clears throat> sign has to hold. Uh, third page, uh, 230313D2. There's a definition added for a structural type. And that was monument sign because I think there was some discussion about the possibility of any sign with an electronic display, either a screen or letters, um, be a monument type. So I just took one of the definitions. Um, what I did do was I changed um, in, the, in the second line, I used the word and instead of or. It did say internal structural framework or integrated into landscaping. And my understanding was that landscaping or other structural features were what the uh, commission was looking for. So I changed the word or to the word and. In other words, it's going to have to be a, a substantial sign that has landscaping and or other brickwork, something other than just a sign on a pole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I did. I didn't see anything in the notes that Ms. Cohn gave me about. I know there was discussion about the maximum size. Should it be smaller, for example, on East State Street than 100 square feet? Should it be a smaller amount? And should this a monument <coughs> sign, if you want to have an electronic sign, it has to be a monument sign, how tall can it be? So I essentially just inserted that language but left two, two blanks there um, about the maximum height and the maximum face area. We didn't decide, I think. Yeah, I didn't so think I just, we were wearing down. <laughs> yeah. So I went ahead and, and set that up. That way we can just kind of fill in the blank there. Um, under design standards, uh, number two materials was completely eliminated. And then I added this, this other language about electronic signs. 
um, electronic message centers and electronic display screens. So it differentiates between just ones that have letters or numbers only and then ones that have screens that display images. Also, any time that I saw the word animation uh -huh. in anything that I was looking at, I took that, I completely eliminated that because we have those movement restrictions. I didn't want the word animation to appear anywhere, mm -hmm. giving anyone the impression that animation, animation could be all, permitted. Right. So mm -hmm. Anytime I'm looking at any of these things and that word comes up, let's take it out completely. Now, we haven't said anything. Besides not saying anything about the sizes of the monument signs, we haven't said anything about the um, frequency with yeah. which they can change, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. yeah, because you discussed, could it be 30 seconds, minute, hour, two hours? So that's something else that, that has to be decided. And it can be inserted. I mean, I've, yeah. got, I've got this in a format now with the office where mm -hmm. I can modify it real easy. And then... I'll always be able to bring it back to you for your review, and you can see what exists and yeah. what the proposed changes are. It's real easy for me to change this. Well, we didn't discuss the size or the length of time, actually, or the, uh, the frequency. Yeah. Do we need to um, add the same exception in paragraph two that we have in paragraph, in, in G2 as we have in G1 under elimination of sign? Because it, when, when, if you just read it without knowing our discussion, it might read that um, electronic message signs have to be completely off mm -hmm. um, when the business closes, even if they have the time and temperature on them. Mm. <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe I could clean that up a little bit to say... Um, I guess what we're talking about is our, your normal internal or internal lighted sign or external lighted sign, the ones that you see now. In the past, those have had to, in an R3, turn off. <coughs> okay. In other zones, they were allowed to stay on. But we had the discussion about businesses. Most of them do turn their signs off. Is that something, do you want all of East State Street essentially to be dark if all the businesses are Sounds closed? Sounds good to me. <laughs> um, so that's why I took out all, all R3 and put in any. I think what Ray's saying too, though, is then you say, "Oh, but you can have the electronic sign still on." Maybe yeah. what you do is down in G2, you add one more sentence and say, um, "This this section does not apply to signs displaying time and temperature." To that portion of the sign, or, or the that portion, portion of the sign, time sign. and temperature. Right. Okay, I see yes. what you're saying because we were talking mm -hmm. about, uh, for example, CVS. Mm -hmm. They could change, flip their advertising to time and temperature mm -hmm. when they lock the door. But they're not a monument sign. No, they're 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 ahead of all this. They are. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. They need somebody to chop uh, it down. A we bit. need. Also, not only the height of the monument sign, but we need a width, too, don't we? Mm. Well, there was some discussion. One of the definitions had um, uh, something about 120 percent, no more than 120 percent of the width to, it was a strange thing that I remember Mr. Hazlett commented on that really didn't see, it didn't seem workable, that definition. So, I mean, just, I suppose just picture in your mind how wide would you want to see these and how tall. How about a maximum of 10 feet tall and 5 feet wide? 10 feet tall. 10 feet tall is big. And 5 feet wide. How tall is the one down in front of the bank? <laughs> in front of bank one? The bank, no. um, it's Stimson. It's Stimson. She gave us the dimensions. She's, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. with me. Well, I, I think it was wider than 5 feet. Well, yes. I think it's too big. I th it's then, it, it may be... It's not nearly as high as 10 feet. No, and I think it's too high. Really, it doesn't, it sort of detracts from the building somehow. It doesn't, it doesn't go through. But I think that the sign is overpowering for the rest of it, <coughs> personally. <coughs> the rest of it looks nice and all the landscaping, but that sign, and I, I have to go look at a sign. I can't visualize the size, and I have no idea what that, she gave it to us, but I didn't bring it with me. I can't remember what it said, but... Whatever it is, I think it's too tall. Oh. Hmm. And, and where? 
And that's where you have the definition. You, have, you could go even five by ten is what, in 50 square feet? 50 square feet. Mm -hmm. So then obviously you're going to have to be somewhere less than that in order to have some kind of internal structure that the sign would be. Because right now in a B3 you're allowed, what, 100 feet? 100 square feet? Um, on East State Street where there's four or more lanes of traffic, you're allowed up to 100. Every other B zone is three or less lanes where you're only allowed a maximum of 50 square feet. Okay. Well, if you had... Five by ten, you'd have fifty square feet, and then if you had no more than sixty percent of that be a message area, uh, you'd have what? You'd have thirty thirty square feet of message, right? Yeah. Which is plenty of message. <coughs> yeah. Um, for that type of design, yeah. yes. I mean, I don't know what, with current design, how big those things mm -hmm. get. They look pretty big to me. What type of sign is that? Those electronic plasma. Oh, oh, you All can get that. real big ones. Yeah, they're, real. yeah, they're <laughs> huge. I see them there. You can get them as large mm -hmm. as a scoreboard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but we really don't need them. Now. But 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 what we need to do is limit the size the monument sign can be, and then that limits the size that the the screen can be because yeah. there's only so much space on the thing. If you allow a mon, I don't know how is there a limit to what a mon? It, it does. It's no longer a monument size if it gets to pass a certain size, and then it would be something else. You know what I'm saying? Is there right a limit now, all we have is freestanding box. sign. There's no mention of monument. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but we need to. Structure. Yeah, if it gets bigger, so you'd have to. We really should say that a monument sign has to be a certain, can only be up to a certain size, and then the percentage of then you have the in, the infrastructure, and then you need to have the sign that can only be a portion of it. So oh, I think we're gonna get it down to about this big pretty soon. <laughs> to muddle it even more. <laughs> I think you need all three dimensions. You need depth. So oh, that's you know, right. That's you. right. Because they are. Mm -hmm. I don't want it five feet deep and five feet wide. Well, <laughs> feet tall. <laughs> you know? They can put a this bell in it. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> now, when I picture a monument sign myself. Well, it does, but I think we have to define all three yeah. dimensions as yeah. maximums. Yeah. Um, we can do that similarly to maximums. what a wall sign is. A wall sign has a maximum projection off the face of a building of 18 inches. Mm -hmm. That's what it says now about wall signs. So that make sure that they don't go right. come out like 3D on top of you. Um, to me, a monument sign is there are some types of signs that I think are monument signs that aren't really described in that way in the code. But for a subdivision or a planned unit development, six feet maximum height to the top. Um, most of the signs on Columbus Road, if you go out through there, to me, those are monument type yeah, signs. Yeah, I would say that too. The reason those all have a certain look and consistency is because they're all in the city right away and they were reviewed mm -hmm. and approved as revocable licenses from city council. So that's why you see the similar brick column on each side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they're no taller yeah. than six feet. The sure. base area is pretty limited. So to me, six feet to the top or seven, six maybe. That's a monument sign. Mm -hmm. small. So, so maybe we've mm -hmm. already got the dimensions, mm -hmm. then we'll just use that. And then so you six define the six would be a guideline. Mm -hmm. And then. But what width are they? <laughs> well, the width then would be driven by whatever you allowed as the maximum <clears throat> face area. Six feet to the top, no more than 50 square feet in area. So if you divide six into 50, that's going to give you your maximum width. Eight point something. Eight. <clears throat> well, and it won't even be. You won't even have that maximum width available if you're going to have some sort of supporting structure that's not poles. Right. So, so it'll cut down the display area. Well, that Sounds right to me. Yeah. <laughs> or if you wanted to make it just try to stay with the 50 foot standard, mm -hmm. five to the top, 10 in width, you could describe it that way, maximum five feet to the top, maximum 10 feet in width. And then when somebody maxed it out, they would it would automatically take them to the 50 square feet. That'd that be another way to do it. To I'm not real sure about mm -hmm. limitations on height. You know what I'm saying? Do those does those types of signs need to be a little higher for some reason? Because they're trying to you know, trying to keep it trying to get information information out for advertising. Or well, but is it the better if it was lower? Is, is different there. I mean, that's why we have a zoning.
because if, anyone, if you are where I mean a lot of these anymore because they're built up areas they're building in some of their parking lots up higher than the road surface and the signs look key. I don't want the sign up on the parking lot height basically because <laughs> that can really get huge I mean what you mean 10 feet above the parking lot is too much well I I Probably think so. Yeah. Well, you're, go, cause you're going. Uh, you're, it make, it's because yeah. if you have that slope type, of, I'm thinking of Taco Bell and where yeah. the, the other new restaurant is mm -hmm. out through there. And, uh, and, and you look at Renzelli's properties out there. I mean, probably as you get closer to the overpass, you might need 10 feet of fill to bring it up to the 100 year flood plain. So your structure and everything else is going to be sitting up pretty high if you want to mm -hmm. put a display sign in there. Right now, the measurement standard is top of the sign to the grade immediately adjacent to the base of the sign. Okay, so if it's up 10 feet already, it's it's not starting at 10 feet, it's starting at zero at that area, and then you go up. Well, well, I guess what I'm saying it's a little problematic, I think, as the mayor's right. pointing out that I can go out and build a big hump uh, <laughs> yeah. and then put my sign on top of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. But you do have buildings that are elevated on fill to protect them. But I like the idea that for a monument sign, you're wider than you're taller. Mm -hmm. And so if you're six feet by nine or ten, let's say you're six by ten, that gives you 60 square feet. Yeah, max is 50 for sign face, so you've got to use the balance of brickwork or the internal structure of something. Somebody show me something that's ten feet long. How long are these? Eight? About these three. are five of these tiles. <laughs> yeah. five of these. these are two by two tiles. So yeah. that likes four by two. So uh, which way you want to look at the sign. Mm -hmm. um, from the vent, including the light, two, four, six. So there's six feet right there. Ten feet of width would be five panels over. Two, three, four, five. From vent to vent. And then a square. Uh, well, see, that's too big. <laughs> that's 50 square feet. That's too big. Excuse me, that's six by ten. That's too mm. big. Well, you that's a big sign. Oh, yeah, but right now in B3, we allow 50 square foot signs. But we're talking rows. about a monument sign, which is really looks different from other signs, I think. Yeah, because it's not going to have the height that the mm. others do. So you don't want if you if you have if it's that if it's lower it can't be that you've got to bring the sides and it can't be that long it's got you got it you you can't be this way you have to be sort of like that a monument is like a monument in a cemetery think of a monument in a cemetery but just take it no, out I don't yeah really want to. you really do I mean that's what a monument is you know, it know. goes like that and so it's do you see you don't see many that tombstones that go like that and usually what will happen though with the monument sign too you got recall that if you look at the face of the sign when they construct it <clears throat> the ground level up to some point is not going to have any information right. on it. Right. Right. So they're going to, to get it up to a reasonable, say, to get it 12 inches above the ground, <clears throat> they got to take that one foot times whatever width they use and put nothing on it because people aren't going to look well, at the yeah, ground to read the sign. And you're going to have the side things, but it isn't the point to try to get the sign smaller and not be so garish and goofy. At least that's right. my point. Yeah. So you have to, don't make it too big. Don't give them a lot of room to work in. Be, let's be <laughs> concise and to the point. They can put just two words instead of a whole bunch, I think. Well, yeah. If he's going to make it 10 feet long. and, and that 10 up, feet's too long. He's going to waste 10 square feet of his message. <laughs> On other body. Just getting yeah. it up from the ground. Not this way. He's just he's doing it this way. Yeah. This way is one of these tables on its edge. Yeah. That's this is an eight foot table. Okay. Well, if I you think. turn it on its edge. Eight by. Then it'd be eight by what? Between three, three and, and a half. It's not. That okay. might be four feet right in the center. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, call it, it curve. Call it thirty-two. Yeah, thirty-two square feet. square feet. And then you're going to have to take part that of it much? off for the mm -hmm. sides. Okay. Mm -hmm. And part of it off for the bottom, and you probably going to have to take part of it Some off for the, the top. I the think top. that's plenty. <laughs> 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 and you can have the little message. <laughs> well, what I was trying to do was Steve was saying that most of those on Columbus Road are around six feet from the ground. Mm -hmm. I, and I don't think those thing. look too bad. I think yeah. maybe what we should do is Go just look at them. 
take a look at them. All we really need to decide, I think, today is uh, we just going to talk about it again in two weeks. Is that what you want to do? Well, I think this is yeah. this, he's, he's done a good job here. Well, yeah, well, I think that's why we. And that's yeah. why well, we that's just like I say, I've got it in a format now. We can just yeah, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. we've got it established. We can just keep packing. So the other thing is the dimensions and the, the sequence is the other yeah. thing. And the really and uh, making sure the time and temperature are not right. Xed yeah. out. Yeah. That one, I think, is yeah, I, You know, how you don't pay attention. I see those signs out in Columbus Road, and I think I think they're attractive, but I. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need to go out well, and actually go look at them. And they're them. fairly uniform. Yeah. yeah. Most of them are right around 50 square feet mm -hmm. and um, six feet to the top. Yeah. Um, um, anything, if you get any smaller than that, especially if the speed limit's very great, you mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. you lose the ability even to comprehend right. what's on the sign. But the other difference with Columbus Road is that it's a very wide right of way. Mm -hmm. 140 mm -hmm. feet in some locations. Right. Oh. And so mm -hmm. there are, you're away from the street, whereas yeah. like, mm -hmm. if we're looking at our B3 on Stimson Avenue. Yeah, they're or right on top B, of them. The, see, the B2 and Richland Avenue wouldn't permit mm -hmm. these, right? Um, no, it's they're per, they're permitted in B2. Okay, zones. B2. So okay, so mm -hmm. Richland, mm -hmm. which uh, okay, right on is top a 33, of the road. Is it 33 feet wide street Boy, with sidewalks? Really, you might have much more right away there. <laughs> Richland Avenue uh, and East State Street. These signs could probably come right up almost to the right, sidewalk. Right, because within a foot or two of the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. We're at the right of way pretty much on yeah. that one. Well, um, so we have to take that a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. So maybe we want them smaller than the 50 is around on Columbus Road because of the distance closer. Right. Are there a couple of signs out there on Richland around there by um, um, the church company along in there <coughs> or a fair place or <coughs> some monument signs right along there, which I would, not real fancy signs, but what you would call a monument? Um, there are some that I think I'd call bulletin board signs. Is that what they are? I'm trying to picture what they are. Signs. Mm -hmm. There's one mm -hmm. at the building that Margaret Topping used to be in. I've forgotten who's in it now. Uh, it's not the not where the insurance company the, is. It's, it's, it's a, a brick building. Brick building. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Solon Bloom Solon is in it. That's okay. right next to the uh, Solon Bloom is a good right. example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's a monument sign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, mm -hmm. And it's a rich one. And, I have, uh, I think and it's, I it's unobjectionable. I have to go look at those things. Okay. Well, that's why I thought well, I yeah. just, we were suggesting, because we can talk about this for hours more time. I know. <laughs> well, I'd like, to, <laughs> I'd like to look again at right. the um, things that, that um, what's her name, gave us the other day. Chris, Christina? From the From the bank. bank. Yeah. Right. Oh, the mm -hmm. dimensions See what their dimensions are. And the specifications <clears throat> for theirs. But okay. Hmm. But I think anyway, this, thank is, you for doing I mean, this, this is fine. This well, is especially fine. for being able to read my head. <laughs> I gave you all your notes back. So yeah. if, I, if they weren't translated well, you, you, you there tell. they are. It's what I had to work with. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, is this our work session we're just completing yeah, we're here now? Yeah. All right. We have minutes. Thank you, Steve. You didn't have anything else? Just oh, one other no. real quick thing. <laughs> real, this is real quick. Real quick. This is getting like staff me. What is and this? Staff me. Mm -hmm. um, there was some discussion about temporary signage at the last meeting. Just to give you an update on that, I have a new temporary sign permit application that I've created. Um, officers have been distributing information related to the temporary sign ordinance to businesses, especially we started on East State Street. Um, eventually, officers will help me do that because it's impossible for me to cover the whole town and track it. I have actually a new listing now where any officer can come in and see the date that the permit was pulled for a one month period and if it's been <coughs> renewed for those other three periods of time. It's going to take a little work and a little bit of time to do it, but I think once we get the program up to speed and there are five or six of us that are always working on the same document, it'll work. Um, related to that, um, when we do start looking at that, please take the section out that says the zoning administrator may permit balloons that are otherwise prohibited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we if anybody get wants to see one, go down Columbus Road, because I was there today at WATH, and Taylor Motors has super deal dog out. It's that <laughs> dog. So I can, what I'll, probably what I'll end up doing is sending them a letter that's similar to the one that I sent to another car dealer. It essentially says you can only have that prohibited balloon if you give me an application and I permit it. 
So it's quite a quandary to be in where people don't want to see them, but the code allows them if they're if you get a permit. permit. Uh -huh. So if, if we well, don't want those balloons, let's so in, in this document file that you've got for us as, as to the changeable signs, we need that paragraph where if that gets eliminated added to this package. Where what then? The, the balloon business. The balloon the balloons. Balloons. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Put it in this package. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've got part of this change. Oh, I'll, I'll give you a few other ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do. 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 Give us a few you others. You want to add flapping we'll look, right? we'll, <laughs> Let's yeah, get the let's signage thing once. done because there's so many other things. I've been discussing, um, I've talked to Larry Payne at the Chamber of Commerce because I've discussed mm -hmm. some things with him about the current temporary sign regulations that he believed were not part of the regulation. Mm -hmm. If you look at the text at the city website, it says one thing. If you look mm -hmm. at the actual language attached to the ordinance, it says something else, which once I get <laughs> resolution from the law director's office about which one is in fact what <coughs> the regulations are, um, there'll, there'll probably be other concerns I raised. Think it's the ordinance. The ordinance. Everybody knows you can't trust what you see on things. You know, you can't take that. It's gospel. Everybody well, even knows it's that. Even in the code book, I think. You have to go in the by the code. The printed. Right. That's would be my opinion. It's Mine too. I almost you went to law school read. once. Yeah, I've tried. <laughs> my brother went. <laughs> yeah, see, it works. There's a, there's a disclaimer on the website too. So. Yeah. What? It's hard enough to read the words. Get it wrong. Get it wrong. Don't you yes, see on the yes. website? May not necessarily. Well, websites yes, are does. not trustworthy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Basically, yeah. You never. Who, well, could, somebody could hack in and change it. Yeah. yeah. Who is the webmaster? <laughs> yeah. Do you have something else? No. Yeah, that's, that's all. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for all your yeah. hard work and all everybody who helped you with it too. Mm -hmm. uh, minutes. I approve. I approve. <laughs> <laughs> I move we approve. <laughs> Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, our next meeting is when? Two weeks. Two weeks. Right What's now, two weeks? Schedule. The third? May third. May 3rd. Okay. All right, now the seventh thing is adjournment. So move. Okay, second. we're adjourned at. I know it's nope. one minute after four or two minutes after.